All right, so I'm going to grab a bunch of color on here. I'm going to get my, my pointer brush or my really small brush. Damp, but it's not going to be soaking because I want some control here. And I'm just going to outline this area. And if I need more shadow, then I'll just add little drops of black in the body of my cat. So you decide what kind of color you want your cat to be. And let's uh, let's begin with this, this kind of outline thing so that way your body parts are well defined within the cat's body. So they kind of pop out a bit. I don't have a lot of water on my brush so I'm literally taking the moisture that's on my brush right now to help spread this black around. Um, for my tail. I'm not really going to bother too much with the outlining technique with the ears because I have such a skinny amount of space. But if you have really big ears, you could decide to do it differently. It's totally up to you. Add a little fluff here. And when you're comfortable, feel free to drag that color in. You might need to switch to a bigger brush. I'm just trying to get this If your nose is going to be a different color, avoid painting it until you have decided if you want to use oil pastel or paint for the nose. I'm actually going to use ink for my eyes and my mouth, but I am not going to do that until I'm 100% done with my painting. However, I want my nose to be a different color, so I'm just going to leave it white for right now. We're spreading that color in using a damp flat. We're not flooding the area. It's just a tiny little bit of water. This will help make sure that your cat's color won't bleed into your background as well. Before you think about adding any shadow, just fill in this area first. And once it's dry, then we can add some shadow then, right? We don't want to we don't want to get too crazy with it. You can always add more paint. It's harder to take away paint than it is to add it. Your cat should be dry now, or at least mine is, so I'm just going to add a few dots of shadow here to kind of get my leg to pop out from the body. And then I will have to wait for this to dry before I add an additional layer. Always wait for your surface to dry before you start adding additional layer or else you're, all you're going to be doing is just moving paint around. It's going to be very frustrating. All right, so while my kitty cat's drying, I'm going to show you guys how to do pine trees. So I cleaned my brush out really good, right? Or really well. I think well means... Um, proper English. Anyway, for your pine trees, you want a damp brush and whatever type of green you have decided. I like to do the lighter green and then use the darker green to add a little bit of shadow, but it's totally up to you. It's your art. Collect some of that paint until your brush turns into a leprechaun. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> until it turns green. <laughs> And you're going to do sidewards diagonal strokes in the direction of which the branches are going to flow. You can tell that it kind of looks like the kind of the evergreen trees, those jagged edges there. And you're going to do the same on the opposite side, but you're going to go in the direction in which those branches would be going if it were like a real tree, right? 
we're using our brush, we're using the our brush strokes to emphasize texture, to create kind of the realistic surface of what an evergreen tree would look like and how it would move in real life or be shaped or formed. When you're done doing the outside of your tree, just add just a drop of water to the tip of your brush. Don't worry about rinsing it out. You're literally going to use that extra paint on your brush to kind of serve like a controlled wash. And when I say controlled wash, that means you're kind of thinning out the color using um, your leftover paint and some water. Because you want these edges here for each tree to still be well defined. That's why we're doing that. kind of filling in the shape of your tree. Keep your brush strokes in mind. You kind of still want to emphasize or kind of move your brush in the direction in which the tree's branches would go. Because once your paint dries, it will leave paint streaks and it's kind of like drawing. You can use those streaks to like create texture. If you don't like how scratchy your edges are, you can always take that damp brush and kind of feather it in between the spaces of your tree limbs to kind of, you know, soften up that area. And feel free to add an additional layer on the edges of your tree branch to kind of bring those edges back out again. Because that, that kind of controlled wash that we just did there kind of faded some of your markings out. And that's okay. That's okay. Your trees are in the black, the black ground. The black ground. Yes, it's a word. No, it's not. In the background. So it's going to be a little more blurred. That's all right. That's all right. And just keep pushing and pulling your paint strokes until you're satisfied with how your tree looks. Wherever, whatever side is furthest away from your light source or your moon or your sun, you're definitely going to want an additional layer of green in those areas to kind of create a sense of shadow. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm adding a secondary layer of paint on these areas to kind of make them look more three-dimensional. The trick with the sunset is you're literally using a flat that's damp, okay, It's and, and you're going to start with your lightest color, like yellow, and just like you did with your cat's body, you're going to pick up a bunch of yellow and make some strong streaks, okay? If you're doing pink or purple or, or even blue for that matter, like a dusky sunset, Go from your lightest color to your medium color to your darkest color and add streaks of color. So here, my, my next color is orange. It's closer to red, but it's not as dark as red, right? The reason I say go from light to dark is because you don't want your dark color to overpower any of your light streaks. That's why I'm saying that. Just do little streaks here. And I want red. But if you want something different, that's fine. It's the same technique. Lots of paint, solid streaks. When you're ready, clean off your brush, squeeze out the extra water, and literally blend with your damp brush to create kind of like, kind of creating a blended wash here. You got paint, you're thinning it out with water, and that's your sunset. And if you want it to be more intense, just add an additional layer of color in what air, whatever area you want to be, become stronger. Like I feel like this red's kind of weak right here. 
when you get to your bristles of your um, pine tree, you're going to take this flat edge here and you're just going to squeeze it in between your bristles so that way you don't drag green into your sky. Just keep that in mind. So I'm collecting a lot of paint here and then I'm going to run my brush tip along the edge of this line to give my cat some grounding or to ground my cat so that way my cat's not floating in the sky. Now I am taking the leftover paint that I have on my brush and I am spreading it back and forth to fill in the space in which my cat stands. Now if you need to, you could dampen your brush a little bit to help that paint flow more freely. Now for this tight area underneath your tail or between your foot and your tail, feel free to use the tip of your brush to kind of chisel your way in to these tiny little areas. Now I used a brown wash on this plateau back here but I have a feeling that the color I have is a little too similar in value to the color in the sky. So I'm going to have to wait until my watercolor wash dries and add an additional layer. But in order to do a watercolor wash, it's literally a thin layer of water and a thin layer of paint on top and you spread it from one side of the paper to the other. Now that I have added my second layer of paint to my hillside or my plateau, I'm now going to work on my hill. I want a lime green color, so I need to clean up my brush really, really well, and get all that brown out of there. And then I'm going to pick up lots of green paint, create a series of streaks, and then I'm going to use my damp brush to kind of blend and feather out these streaks into a soft, hazy hill. I'm moving my brush in a curved manner to kind of imitate the curvature of the hill. I'm going to continue doing this until my hill is completely blended all the way across my watercolor piece. Now if you want to add some shadow to your piece, especially where the pine trees are, or to try to distinguish one hill from another, you can use color to do that. You can add an additional layer of color on top of your hill to help create that separation and that sense of shadow. Just try to do it while your paper is dry. You're literally adding another wash on top of the wash that you have just created. Now if you think that the strokes that you have just applied to your paper are coming off a little too strong, you can always use a damp brush, not soaking wet, damp, to feather out those hard lines. Okay, so I'm going to add a, a secondary layer of color on my cat. This is how you build shadow. So once your surface dries, you can just go in and add an additional layer. So here's the shadow for my chest. Wait until you are completely dry. Because if not, you're just going to move paint around. If you want, you can use a dry brush to add like fur too. I also want to stress we're using very little water here and lots of paint. Once your watercolor is completely dry, you have the option of using um, pen to draw in the face of your cat in maybe oil pastel or really, really soft, soft dab of pink watercolor for the nose and ears. Totally up to you. I used oil pastel. I didn't like how my nose turned out, so I easily scratched the oil pastel off with my fingernail and started over. You could also use oil pastel or crayon for your son as well. Totally up to you. Your art, your choice. 